The word to the song says this. Now it's time to celebrate all banners raised. I got the victory, the victory. Because the devil is defeated and God will be praised. He said, I have the victory. I got the victory. In every situation I face, I win. I have the victory. He goes on to say that there is no failure. Our God can never lose. And that same power, it is now belongs to you. Papa brought a message about a month ago. You can have your seat. Let me, let me give you our, our base scripture. Our base scripture is found in 1 John 5 and 4. And this is where Papa started out when he, when he began to, his message about a month ago. And it reads in the NLT, or the New Living Translation, for whatever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. He went on to say that we achieve victory through our faith. I can't get no plainer than this. The word, how many, first of all, how many believe the word of God? Seriously, how many really, truly, honestly believe the word of God? The word of God said that who whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. My uh, next scripture is found in 2 Corinthians 2, 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. In the King James Version, it says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifestation the Savior or the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. So remember, how many of us today that is pushing through to have triumph victory. The Bible said that in every place, in everything, we have the victory. The problem is not the word. Our, our title today is Triumph Victory through the word. The, the challenge is this, the through part. The through part, which simply means that you have to enter one way and come out another way before you even get to the word. Try out victory in the word. Okay, let's do it Prophet Max style. You know how I like to do it. Try out. Try is three, is God. All right? This is the other part, like, um, you am, um, uh -huh. That just simply means, well, I just don't know. Right? And then the hot part talks about, I continue to seek your company. And the VIC is the vicinity. And I know this probably sounds a little strange, and it, but, 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 but hear me out. When you're in a situation, just know that when you say cry up, there is a part of you that has to surrender. See, our problem is we think we know everything. We think that we can do everything. We think that our words are the words that have some effect, but they don't. 
what makes triumph victory in every place is the fact that you're speaking his word and not your words. Oh, come on. So let me hear you just repeat after me. Say, this is not fiction. This is not a fantasy. This is a fact and a truth. It's not your opinion or you have options that it is subjective. It doesn't mean that it changes with any situation or circumstance. But here it is. You guys really repeat. You can pause, right? It's none of those things, but it is the standard. Okay. Triumph victory for those that are born in Christ is nothing else but the standard of living. It is not subjective based on whatever happened in your life. It has nothing to do with what, what comes or goes or what people do. If you are born of God, the Word of God says that you are an overcomer, and that is the standard. So my question is, are you overcoming in every area of your life? Are there some places in your life that you need to overcome? Right? But now, here, here is the challenge. What you do will always outweigh what you say. What you do will always outweigh what you say. But in this case, it really seems to go against what we're talking about, right? Because we're saying this, that the title of the message says that it's triumph victory through the word. Word, the word. But what you do will always outweigh what you say. And so the situation is what we say is really, the, if I can say this, it is the physical manifestation of what you're thinking. The words that come out of your mouth, whether intentional or unintentional, is really a hint of what's in your mind, what you're thinking. But the Word of God is the standard. You can't have triumph victory without opposition. You can't. So here we're saying that we have triumph victory, but yet we want to bypass the very thing that will catapult us in the standard of having triumph victory. Let's face it, there's some stuff going on in your life right now that's keeping you from having a direct connect or being on fire and being alive with the Heavenly Father. I, I, I hear what you say, but I'm, I'm watching what you do. So it's not the fact that we can't have triumph victory. It's not the fact that we can't walk in such an authority of heaven. That's not the case. The case is we just decide not to. Because the truth of the matter is there is never a situation in your life that you should not have triumph victory over. No, there's not a place, there's not nothing that's happened. You should always be walking with an authority and an understanding. No matter what, I have triumph victory because I am Lord of God. The standard. So my question is, are you living up to just the bare minimum? The standard is just really the bare minimum. The bare minimum is you should be walking and cry out victory everywhere you go. That's just. But when you understand. 
understand that in the process of having triumph victory, that I must have opposition, then you embrace what's going on in your life. Then you don't try to play it out. Then you don't try to get, then you don't get discouraged or frustrated. You just understand that this is part of me walking in victory. Does that make sense? You can't have victory without a challenge. You, you simply can't. But the truth of the matter, you were born an overcomer. You were born one. The problem is, we're so busy trying to be one through other means. I'm not a father, right, because I'm trying to be a father. Because I have kids, I'm a father. Does that make sense? And so, because I am a father, father, I'm supposed to do certain things. So, you are an overcomer. You don't have to try to be an overcomer. The posture is, because I'm an overcomer, this is what I do. I will run through troops. I will leap over a wall. I will look them in the face. I will tell them you're a liar. That's not the truth. Not because, I, but you're trying to be an overcomer. So as long as you're trying, you'll never be. Because trying takes the place of being. So when you just be an overcomer, then you, it, it's a whole different mindset. When you hear things, when you see things, people don't frustrate you because you know, I'm coming through. I have to go in this way and come out this way. But the challenge is I got to do it without getting stuck. But we get stuck because we forget. We forget because we don't remind ourselves or what see, we are what we hear, we eat. You are <coughs> Yes, Lord. You are what you eat. So if you're eating and listening to certain things, certain words other than words of overcomer or words of the father or then what happens is when you face situations the word that comes out of your mouth you just reproduce what's in you and it has no effect but even that <laughs> doesn't mean anything you can be the the most sad depressed crazy person but in an instant, if you remember that you're an overcomer, all that ceases right now. Right there, you don't have to. You don't have to go through no long prayer fasting. Now we know some things come by fasting and praying, but being an overcomer is not one of those things. You don't have to fast and pray to be an overcomer. You are an overcomer. And because you're an overcomer, this is what you do. You show up when you're supposed to show up. No one has to call you because you already have it in your heart, the vision of the ministry. You don't have to wait for someone to tell you to do anything because you've already looked down the road as an overcomer and you're looking for challenges in the ministry. You're looking, okay, okay, there's a challenge in the ministry. There's a challenge of finances. Okay, I'm an overcomer. So what can I do as an overcomer to get from here to there without getting stuck that will break the finances through? Oh, come on. We all got a responsibility. Why? Because we're all overcomers. You're overcoming, you're overcoming, you're overcoming, you're overcoming. We're all overcomers. But if we're all overcomers, what's the problem? Uh, uh, um, tell your neighbor, don't get stuck before the word manifests. Here's a thought. 
old song that came to my mind earlier today, and it, 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 the words is this, is this. In shade, shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. With a water cool flow, bathe weary one's feet, God leads his, his dear children along. So here's the part that I like. He said that some through the water, some will go through the flood. Some will have to go through the fire, but every last one of us has gone through the blood. Oh, 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 oh. See, your struggles may be, your challenges may be different than mine. Some will have to go through the water because he's trying to wash, he's trying to cleanse you, he's trying to, he's trying to get some debris off of you, he's trying to get you through the process. And some through the flood, because you're so busy always trying to be in control, he has to get you into a place where you feel helpless. And some through the fire, because like my mama said, you don't believe fat meat is greasy. You'll get that later. She said, boy, you don't believe fat meat's greasy. In other words, she said, I told you that already. You still doing that? Go get that switch, boy. But no matter where you are in the process, all of us, we get it because we go through the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. He is the Redeemer, the great Redeemer. He became like us. So we don't have to deal with all this. See, we deal too much with lower level stuff. We get so distracted with lower level stuff. We never get to the big stuff. We never get to the powerful stuff. We never get to the dimensional things. Because we worry about the little stuff. Oh, my toe aches. I got a headache. I'm tired. And let me, let, me, let me tell you this, and this is no reflection on anyone I, I look at. If you begin to find yourself or hear people talking about, I'm burnt out, I'm tired, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, can I tell you? That's the spirit of Jezebel, undercover. We, I know we get tired. I know we get, you know, I know. But as long as you dwell there, when you dwell there, I'm telling you, it is a secret, hidden thing, a mesmerized spirit of a Jezebel spirit. Let me say, let's say it this way. There's some people that are passive-aggressive. And there's some people that are aggressive. It's those folks that are passive aggressive that kind of will catch you off guard. See, the Jezebel spirit knows that, you know what, if it comes like this, see, it disguises itself like Christian work and Christian stuff. It disguises itself by giving you just enough truth to get you to nod your head before it throws a curve for you while you still nod your head. That's right. Amen. Amen. And it ain't told you a lie. Yeah, I'm a grim. Because we deal in the minor stuff of life. But we're talking about becoming who you already are. Triumphant. John 16, 33 says it like this. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall, or you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Oh, you're going to have some opposition. You're going to have some, but that's the process. Without it, how would you know that you have victory? Where is your measurement? 
of being triumphant. Which is the triumph over? Get me? You see what I'm saying? So, but First Corinthians gives us a, a, a way, another word of encouragement. Fifteen fifty-seven. It says, "But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ." Can I tell you, we really don't have an excuse in this house not to be operating and functioning at a high level, a higher frequency of the spirit. We have no excuse while we're doing the same thing we did before because God has already moved. Don't you know that you could be going the same direction, they say. But if you stop, what happens? Let me help you. You get run over. Because God is moving. His spirit is moving. And if you decide to stop and take a break, you're going to get run over because the spirit is still moving. You don't believe me? Step in front of a car. God is about God's business, not yours. And the truth of the matter is, you don't even really... Okay, I'm not saying you don't know God. But if you really knew how God thought and how he perceived some of the stuff, some of the people that you're mad at, some of the people that you're frustrated, some of the people that you have cut off, you'll realize that God doesn't see them like that. That's you. That's your perception. Apostle, you know, they, they were kind of talking about this movie, this, the, the Shack. I recommend you go see The Shack. Because it gives you a whole different perspective. Because it's not about you, your feelings, your thoughts. It's, 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 God is not about you and your feelings and your thoughts. He's not. Because ultimately, he has a plan for you. But if you don't get on board to his plan, he's not concerned about really the effect that it has on you. Because he says, he that knows to do right and does not is what? But we put that in so many other big categories. Oh, if I shoot somebody, if I do that, that's a sin. But if you know it's right to be on church on time, and don't. If you know it's right that you gave a vow to do something, and you don't, that's not right. <laughs> See, that's why God doesn't Get caught up in your stuff. Because if he thought like us, we would all be jacked up. He would strike us down. He would cut us off, give us the hand. He would do all kinds of stuff. But he's not like us. And that's the problem. We need to be like him. So while you're tripping about your little stuff and we're licking our wounds, God is still moving. And he's not going to do anything you know, different than he's already done. So the best thing is to get on board of his program and together, collectively, all of us be on purpose, be intentional of being who we are, and that is triumph victorious. Oh, come on. And I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping this up. The word was clear. And I spoke a few things uh, a couple weeks ago, and it talked about 
the uh, spiritual reset in 2017. And it said that that uh, the year of dominion that produces triumph victory, we are getting in our specific, he said, getting to our specific assignment or assigned position as heaven is dispositioning the second heaven and stirring up and erupting this earth. While you look in your wounds, while you are unfaithful to the cause for whatever reason, God is preparing to disrupt this earth. And so he said, remember the words of the Lord that I'm about to invade, in, I, am, I am bringing an invasion into this realm. Some good, some bad, based on your perception, but my sheep will elect and my elect will know my voice. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of you licking your wounds, in the midst of you having an attitude, in the midst of you not being in place, messages are going out. God is speaking. And God is, look, he's doing it with or without us. But he's so gracious to remind us, hey, guys, I love you. I have a purpose. I have a plan. If you would just follow the mandate, you would be able to benefit the power. See, the power and the anointing and the gifting and the finances all wrapped up in the mandate. I'm just saying. So he said, God said, that I set before you wisdom. I set before you grace. And it is through his covenant redeemer that his kingdom will take again the front leading consciousness of the masses. The world is about to get an explosion and a divine encounter. We used to have those uh, encounters, right? But the world is about to get an encounter. And how sad would it be for someone to come up to you that should be, and they trying to bring you on to love God more. Do you know, you know, they try, you know what, and, and, and then they get a word and speak it to you. The point of the matter is, we're not in the same place we used to be. Remember the word spoken by our Papa. He said, this is the year of the overcomer. That's what he said. This is the year of the overcomer. And that God will grant the overcomer to sit with him on his throne. That some will be overcomers of sin. Some will be overcomers of the plans of the enemy. How many overcomers we have in the house? So if there's plans of the enemy that's trying to be dispatched, you as an overcomer have the ability and you should have the ears of sensitivity to be able to... My wife got on the plane today because she's going to Alabama to deal with a spirit that's been haunting her son for a while. To spoil the plans of the enemy. She heard the call. She couldn't take it. I said, baby, if you don't hurry up and get them plane tickets out. I'm like, if you say that one more time, you're going to go. Just go. Because it was burning in her. So what is God burning in you? To spoil the plans of the enemy that's been haunting your family. He said that we would be overcomers of sickness and disease, and some would be overcomers of poverty and lack. Some would be overcomers of the lies that divide the family. I, I don't know what else could be said to 
because it's all been spoken. He said that you were called to be conquerors and that God will create the overcomers and commission them to cry out. Does that word sound familiar? Papa said that overcomers, they will be chosen to win and that there will be tears of victory. My question today, who are you cheering for? What victories have you helped push into existence? Oh, come on. Thank you.